Hello, Cup Coders, and welcome back to the Cup Code server. Uh, sorry, welcome back to Wizards Training on the Cup Code server. I am your host, Magus96. Uh, last episode, we were looking for <laughs> Witchwood, and unfortunately, so far, this is the only piece of Witchwood I've been able to find. It, it, it seems that the land has been pillaged, and there is no Witchwood to be found anywhere. So we're going to go ahead and dig up this Witchwood here and take it back. I'm going to have to actually start planting Witchwood back at the house somewhere, which means I probably need to get some more Ventium so I can place the Ventium down so that the Witchwood will grow. I'm gonna break down the leaves of this one. Hopefully we'll get, get some Witchwood saplings out of it. One at least. So that, that's one we can start growing. And unfortunately, which wood is one that you cannot force grow it. You can't make it grow any faster. So you really just have to be, you know. Oh, fudge. Okay, well, we're going to go ahead and head back. The server is going to reboot in a few minutes. Um, what happens is a server is set up to reboot every six hours. And every five minutes before it reboots, it changes over to peaceful. And then five minutes after it reboots, it changes back to normal. So we're going to go ahead, and I'm going to head back to the house, and then once we get to the house, I'm going to stop the recording right there, and then we will come back after the server has rebooted. And as if I have time to get back to the house before it reboots. All right, well, I'll t tell you what, I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording right now, but I'm going to keep heading back to the house. We'll see you in, in a moment. All right, I am back, and this brings me to a topic that I want to go ahead and discuss real quick. Um, just something I want to say and get off my chest. Uh, first thing, when the server is about to reboot, it does change to peaceful. That is because if you're fighting a boss during or a mob during reboot, eh, that could be detrimental. So that prevents that. But if you happen to be on the server during a reboot, by all means, once you get down to the five-minute mark, or lower than the five-minute mark, once it's really close to rebooting, do not, and I repeat, do not do anything with your inventory. Do not pick items up out of your inventory. Do not put anything in your inventory. Pretty much, I would say, you don't have to log off, but don't be collecting anything. You know, Don't, don't be mining, digging, or fighting mobs, killing animals, or whatever. And don't be moving the things around in your inventory because if you happen to be moving an item around in your inventory at the same time as the server reboots, that can corrupt your player file. That's the only bug that we've noted so far. Um, nothing else will corrupt your player file that I know of, but that definitely will. So just keep that in mind. You don't have to log off during reboot. Just don't be playing with your inventory during reboot. All right, so we're back. Obviously, it is still in peaceful mode. Uh, we've got about three minutes left on peaceful mode. And... I've already gone ahead and reorganized virtually everything. And you see I'm cooking up the meat that we gathered. We gathered quite a bit of it. Oh, look at that. I'm starting another stack of steaks. So I'm, I'm going to stop with the bread. We're not going to eat bread for a while. And we're going to switch over to steaks. We're going to be running around munching on some filet mignon and all that. There we go. Last two pieces of steak. We'll throw that in here. You know what? We're going to go ahead and switch out for the bread. We're going to grab this steak instead. There we go. All right, so we we went ahead and gathered the witch wood, and we brought it back, and I broke it down into the slabs and so we can make our candles. They're called wooding candles, and they're very simple to make. It's just witch wood slab, the pig fat, and some string. And there is a wooding candle, and we need a bunch of these bad boys, actually. So we're going to make as many as we can, and they do not stack just so you have it in mind now here's another benefit of the warding candle i love this part about it watch this it is a walking candle now i don't know why it keeps bouncing up and down like that that is just for me it's odd i don't i've never quite figured it out it, it's 
I don't know. You know, I don't know if that's a bug or if that's intended, but to me, it's quite annoying for it to be bouncing up and down on the side of the screen like that. But, hey, you know, it is what it is. We work with it how we have to work with it. Let's see. We're going to take this out of here. I did not really intend on using it, but that's okay. So we're going to make the, take these wooden candles, and we're going to use those to make our obelisk into the white thing. Hold on. Let's throw this up in here. Actually, let's throw all the wooden candles up in here for now. I want to make sure we have everything we need. All right, so we have the wizard's chalk right there. So we can make the... the thing we've got the wooden candles there we've got the mana focus and i think moonstone so we have everything we need to make the pr celestial prism now the crystal as i keep calling it um so yeah we're gonna go ahead and get started making that then so i take this mana focus throw this back up here take this chalk right here oh sorry blitz and we're gonna take four warden candles and the moonstone <laughs> That will do it. All right, so it's nighttime, I believe, looking at my radar. So I don't want to be bothered while we're working it. See, now it is normal. So we're going to go ahead and sleep to make a day. Now, as you notice, I'm allow I'm able to make a sleep and make a day. That's because there's no one else in this world with me. Blitz is in the server survival world. He cannot hear me. I cannot hear him. Hi, Blitz. You can see it, it, because the world chats are separated so that you can't hear each other. Um, that the reason that is, I and mean, really we don't need it right now, but I put that in for when we become a large server. I don't want, you know, people in the adventure world to be harassed, to be talking to each other and confusing people in the creative world and people in the survival world. You get what I'm saying. All right, now before we get to doing anything, I I noted this chest was out here on the last episode, but I did not actually stop and look at it. Uh, you do see that it is from Blitz1411. That is his name, right? Yes, that is, it, that is exactly his name. So Blitz1411 has sent me a care package. Now, if you want to send me a care package on the server, you are welcome to do so. Unfortunately, you do not have access to this world, so you can't deliver it yourself. What you'll have to do is you'll have to contact a member of the staff or the admin council, and we'll get to that shortly. You'll have to con contact a member of the staff and admin council and request that they send the care package in your place. So you'll have to give them the items, and then they will come here and they will place those items in a chest right here. Now, um, keep in mind, I do not advise sending enchanted items because the inventories for the different worlds are separate. The admin will not be able to carry your item over here. What they're going to have to do is when they get over here in this world, they have to spawn those items in. You know, So in your world, in the survival world, they will take the items from you and they will destroy them. Then they will come over here and they spawn the items in, they put them in a chest and give them to me. So that's how the whole care package thing works. Um, so if you give them an enchanted item, they, they, they are not guaranteed to be able to provide me the same level of enchantment that you provided. Okay, so keep that in mind. Now, what they might do, I don't know. That's up to them and how they want to handle that. They might give me a book so that I can enchant it, you know, a book and some enchanting vials, you know, the vials of experience. All right, so let's go ahead and get, in on, get on with this. This is from Blitz1411, and he has sent us a bunch of reappearing blocks, which I know nothing about. This is from the Twilight Forest. Uh, he has sent us two music discs, so we will have to get a... a a music player going on in there. Let's go ahead and dig this up. Bingo. All right. So there's our care package. We're gonna just gonna go ahead and bring it in here. I'm gonna set this stuff right in here for now because, well, let's be honest. I don't really have. I, I don't. A. I'm gonna have to play with these off offline because I don't know what they do. I, I don't. I have no clue. I'm like, what the heck is that? All right. So we're gonna go ahead and get back to what we were doing. And the first thing I need to do is we need to draw my the symbol around this so we're going to start popping off a corner here come out to and for the celestial prism we're seriously just making a cross around it that's it it's very easy um the celestial prism is the one i don't have to look up i i'm always having to look up the the black orum because it's it's a little funky in the way it's done all right now we're going to take our warding candles place one right there Place one right there. Place one right there. And one right there. 
All right, so there's there's the beginning of our ritual. That is part of the ritual right there. So the next thing we need to do, and the last thing we need to do, is we're going to throw in a mana focus, a moonstone, and then we need to cast a light spell on the obelisk. And that creates our celestial prism. <laughs> Sorry, I really wish that had a sound effect to go with the transformation. But there is our celestial prism. It's very simple to make and produce. Uh, it just takes a little bit of extra effort and steps to do it. All right, so now that we've got our celestial prism, da -da -da -da, next thing we can get working on is the flickers. Because I could have used the, the obelisk to power the flickers, but I didn't want to because that's, you know, it's just annoying. All right, so we're going to grab... This stuff right here, and we're going to make our lure. Place those down right there, and see if we can't find the right order here. And there is our flicker lure. Now, I've got a trick to these things, and you guys are going to love this. Let's see. What do I, what do I want to build it in? You know i got plenty of those. Let's build it in. No, because that'll make it dark. Erg. Oh, I need glass. We do need some glass. And doo -doo 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 -doo. yeah, let's go ahead and build it with this. There we go. Now, one of the questions that people have always asked me, that I've, I keep hearing people saying is, well, how do you catch the flickers? Because they're just, you know, they fly to, they start flying and then they're gone and I can't get a hold of them. Well, I'm going to show you that here in a moment. There is a trick to this. Thank you. Thank you up. There we go. Good, 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 good. All right. I don't need all you guys. All right. Oh, we need glass. I need glass. I, I, I just said that, and I, I forgot to go get it. So we're going to go in here. We're going to grab some glass. I do have glass ready to go. We don't need this dirt right here, so throw it up there. Come on, open. All right, now we're going to make a small room to put the flicker lure in because I want to be able to catch the flickers. And it doesn't have to be very big. It really doesn't. I'll show you. Do, 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 do. Just about like that. Yeah, yeah that sounds good right to me. Where it goes out. That looks good to me, I think. Come on, pick it up. Pick it up! Oh, you punk. All right, and now we need to put the glass in here. That'll keep them from flying away. Next thing we need is we need to put a switch on there, which I don't think I made the lever. Let's go ahead and make a lever real quick. And we'll get rid of some of this stuff here while we're at it. All right, so we need a stick... And a stone, I think, or a piece of wood. I don't remember. Try this. I doubt this is a recipe. Eh. I know. I feel like an idiot right now. Yeah, see? That doesn't work. Okay. Oh, you know what? What? No, no, no. I don't have a redstone torch. But I could easily put a redstone torch. That's what I'm going to do. No, because then I want to be able to turn it off. Durr. Make one of those. I said one piece. Of, oh, I already had cobble. Duh. There we go. There's the lever right there. Let's dump some of this stuff off. Do -do, do -do -do. Throw this other stuff back upstairs. All right. Now that we've got that, we're going to want to put a lever on there. the lever on there and I want to put a door on here as well so let's go ahead and make a door to put on there if I don't already have one and I do not and you know what I'm not using the witch wood no forget that that is not happening I am not using the witch wood it is expensive it is rare we don't have a lot of it one two three four five six It is, for some reason, it is hot in my recording room today. 
I am burning up. Makes no sense. All right, so there we go. We'll put these in here. And, oh, wait, next thing I need is the bottle. I need the flicker, flicker bottles. Because we can't catch the flicker bottles. Can't catch, we can't catch the flicker bottles. We can't catch the flickers without something to put them in. Now I'm losing my head here. Now, this is a recipe that I did not write down, and I don't remember it. So we are going to have to look it up. So we need glass panes, magic walls, and gold nuggets. Well, we obviously have gold nuggets. And... I make glass panes easily. If I remember the darn recipe, that is going to be an issue, isn't it? So there's glass panes. <laughs> now magic walls, I have those downstairs. And gold nuggets will be downstairs as well. So we don't need a whole lot of them. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Gold nuggets. Durr, durr, durr. So, we need glass panes, magic walls, and gold nuggets. And that makes one flicker jar. So, what we're going to do is we're going to make two, I guess. I don't know. Might be able to find an extra flicker. There we go. Actually, I'm, you know, let's go ahead and make a, let's make a bunch more just for the heck of it. We've got 10 more glass panes, so yeah, that'll make 10 nuggets. And well, we've only got seven magic walls, and we don't have any more vintage, so. <coughs> Excuse me. So we're only gonna be able to make seven. Oh wait, wait, wait. How are you gonna be able to make seven? I don't know. My math is way off, isn't it? We're going to be able to make three. That's it. All right, so that's all we're going to be able to make now, I guess. So let's go ahead and throw this stuff back in here. Put this glass pane back upstairs. Need it. And let's go catch us a flicker. Do 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 And now oh wait 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 shoot it's not connected duh Die Just like with everything else we have to connect the out connect our, our power source Where is it? Crystal wrench and you know what Let's sleep it through. No sense trying to get killed out there. Why are you hiding under my house? How dare you? You! Get out of my altar! Get, 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 get! This is my altar. Thank you very much. Alright, so we need to connect this. I'm actually wanting to connect... What? What? Where you come from? You're going to die. That's what you're going to do. I'll tell you where you're going to go. Alright, so we want to connect this to the altar and to the flicker. And unlike with Ars Magica 2.1.1... Um, Beta, we could, and back in the old days, we couldn't connect these to more than one thing. Now that's been changed. So we're going to go ahead and I'm going to shift click on this one. Now you see my crystal wrench has turned green. That means it will remember this. So now I can come over here and I can just click there. That's been paired. So that's now providing power to that. And I want to come in here and we're going to click there. Pairing successful. Dun, 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 dun. So now we're going to shift click here. Oh, 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 oh. And that forces it to stop remembering. Okay, so we're good on that. That should be connected. So now we can come in here. Close our door. Let's eat. Yum, 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 yum. Turn the switch on. And wait. Wait for the beautiful flickers to arrive.
if any are going to arrive. I think that, no, that it, it's possible that this area around my house where I built my house may be corrupted so that flickers will not spawn. That is entirely possible because I did pull this from a one player world onto the server. So that information about what types of flickers can be spawned here may have been lost. So I may, oh, 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 never mind. There it is. So we've just caught a flicker. Let's keep, let's keep going. We're going to find, so I, I was kind of worried about it because I, I was thinking, well, I might have messed it up so that flickers can't spawn here. But no, you just, apparently it, it, it didn't break. So that's good. You really just have to wait. Flicker hunting is a, you know, a patience thing. And the reason we built this structure around it is now the flickers cannot escape. They cannot get out of this. They are stuck inside this because they can't get out. They're, 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 they don't pass through walls. And we have to have the glass above it because when it comes to spawning the flickers, the glass counts as air, uh, as an open block. So you have to have open block. That it has to have access to see the sky in order for the flickers to, to, to spawn. So that's why we put the glass up there. This makes it a ton easier to catch these buggers. Because think about it. If we did not have glass up there or if we did not build this shack around it i swear to god these air flickers that we're catching right now they would spawn and they would head straight up and you wouldn't have but a fraction of a second to try to catch them so this is really as far as i'm concerned the best way now i'm going to go ahead and turn it off and we're going to stop right there um because i don't really need any any more flickers i think one or two flickers is more than enough so we're to get started we need a flicker habitat let's we're going to put this down in the Ars Magicus. Oh, I got a gold chest plate. Check it out. He dropped it. All right. Let's throw that up there. And get rid of this stuff downstairs. Clean up our inventory a little bit. Clean up our act. Throw that stuff in there. Let's see. We've got some. Later on, what we're doing right here, this whole, I'm going to take this here and put it there. We're not going to have to do that anymore. We're not. And once we get done, we are, we're not going to have to do this ever again. All right, so we need a flicker habitat. That is the next recipe in the list is we've got right here. And, yes, this is kind of an expensive recipe because it does take a whole chimerite block in order to, to craft this bad boy. I think this is right. I might be wrong on the ordering. Oh, there it is. Bingo. So there is the flicker habitat. We're going to take this bugger and grab it right there. Now the quest, next issue is where do we want to put our flicker habitat? Um, we want to be able to see it and modify it, but we don't want it. I don't really want it to be in the way. Let's see. Now, in order for the flickers to be able to transfer items and stuff, they have to be able to see what they're... The, I think they have to have a, a clear view to the boxes. So we're going to bring a chest down here, and I'm going to set a chest somewhere down here in the room so that it will we can dump our items into that chest, and it'll transfer the items appropriately. Now, the question is, where do we want to put that chest? Switch to my silk touch. Thinking we can put one chest right there. That sounds good. Hmm. Maybe. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Let me think about this. I haven't thought of... The, oh, I know what. We'll put them right there. That's a good place for them. Okay. So we need... And, and I, I do happen to know that these lockers definitely work. So that's what we're going to... We're going to put these down here. And I think we might put the flicker habitat right here. That sounds good to me. Seriously, I hate that. I hate that. Gee, me Christmas. All right. Er. All right, all right, all right. Flicker habitat goes there. And then we'll put the crafting bench back right there. And then we'll put glass back right there. And then we need the stone back right there. There we go. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to put the flicker habitat right there. Um, that torch is not going to affect it, just so you're aware. And this will give us some room on the either side so we can build around it and 
provided power. Now, flickers do work without power. You do not need to have power for these things. Now, I take one flicker and put it right in there. Actually, no. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Da. It's another thing I keep forgetting. Hold up. I don't want to put the air flicker directly into it. Let's see, where is it? Flicker focus. Item transport. So this is what we need. I need two blue topaz and two chimerite and, of course, the air flicker jar. Which we have the air flicker jar, so that's awesome. So let's go ahead and get down here. Two of these. Two of these. Craft it up. Oops, wrong order. Of course. Of course this way. And there is the item transport focus. So we're going to put that right in there. Now what that does is we are now able, capable of setting up flicker transports. It will move items from one chest to another. Oh, we, we still have to make that chest, don't we? Do, 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 do. Actually, I believe. See, I've got plenty of chests here, but hold on. yeah, I've got a locker here. So maybe I could put it in the locker. No, we'll just put an actual chest down there. One chest should be enough. That's fine. You know what? I wonder. Yeah, I wonder. Let's 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 give this a try. Whoa! Oh snap! I didn't know that. Okay. All right. It won't let me break it using a spell. So, but that's good news. So that I can put my spells on on there, and, and that works. Okay. I want to try this. Hey, it does work. Okay, we'll we'll just leave it right there. That's perfect there. All right, uh, and you see that LWC is working. I don't have LWC on any of the rest of these. Um, so we're just going to go ahead and see remove. All right, that'll remove that. Do, do, do. Oh, I want to be able to get in behind it to place the crystal because that's where we're going to put. The, I want to put the crystals behind the stuff. So we're going to dig in to do that. Oh, and while we have that, since I know I can do that, let's go ahead and put this dig spell that we're not using anymore right up here. There's the journal on it, and there's the dig spell. Okay, what do we have over here? We have silk dig. We have two silk dig spells that I'm no longer using. Over here, I've got a shocker spell I'm not using, and then these are the spells I've actually created. Oh, and I still have one spell on the altar out there. We need to move back in here. No big deal. All right, so next we need to make our crystals. So the first crystal I want to produce is what is called the import crystal. And I've got, got enough stuff to make two of them. Um, I don't know. I don't think I'm actually going to use two. So we're only going to make one. And I'll probably use these topazes for something else. But these are very easy to make. It's just like that. Now let's go silk touch dig spell. I'm going to have to dig in to get behind these things to place these crystals now. now I'm using Silk Touch Dig because well, I don't think I need to be digging a huge hole. So we'll place an export crystal right there. So there's our export crystal. And now we can fill this back in. Uh, import crystal is what it's called. Now the reason what, you, what the import crystal does is it takes items from this and imports them into the item transfer network. That's what this sets up. So then we're going to put export crystals behind those and behind those so that one, well actually I'm going to put mimic crystals behind those and put export crystals behind there. That way it'll take the items from there, this chest, import them into the network and then export them into the all right, hiccups, and export them to the appropriate chest over here. Why do I have... All right, that should be... Yeah, that's all of it right there. Okay. So I'm going to put this right back up there. And I don't really need to be putting bricks back here, which actually this most of this is going to be empty back here anyways. So that this is all going to be empty back here anyways. You can't fill it back in because we're going to have the crystals there. And I'm going to go ahead and dig a hole over here for this one. Oh, we can put these two back right there. Oh, 
Oh wait, this is only too high, so I don't need to put anything up there. So that's fine. I like how the light shines through these things. That's awesome. Alright, so that's it. That's the last one. As you hear, we are out of time for this episode. But I'm going to go ahead and let's try to get as much of this done as possible real quick. I don't know how much we can get done, but we can at least try, right? Let's get that out of the way. All right, so we're going to grab these. These are all for those ones over there. I'm going to make 12 of these bad boys. 13, so bingo. And we're going to take these over here, and I'm going to show you how this works. Put them right down here. We have to shift click to place them. Now the barrels we had I I had Sankator test them last night. The barrels work and just using plain export crystals. So that's awesome because that means these barrels are locked down to these items. Now notice I did not put export crystals on those three because there's nothing in them. Um, you don't want to put a export crystal or yeah, the export crystal on a barrel if it's empty until you place an item in it or until you've locked it to a certain type of item because what will happen is the next time you throw something in the thing it'll just push it right in there so we're gonna pull these out of here and actually no I don't want to pull them all out let's 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 do yeah let's do my obsidian there we go we'll take the obsidian out of there and we're gonna throw it right up in the chest here oh shoot 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 forgot last thing to do I'm gonna shift click this because we need to link this to a lot of different stuff and I totally forgot about this oh it must be nighttime there's a white mage up there so we're gonna shift click that and that pairs it and we're gonna come back here we need shift click each one of these we're not shift click we're just clicking I'm sorry And this is linking them to the item network so that items will transfer through the network to these crystals. This is how you link it up so that you can actually have multiple things. Now, if we check the chest, it is slowly moving one item out at a time and putting it right there. So it, this is a slow method. We can speed this up by placing another habitat right next to it with some other flickers into it. Um, I will make note that there is a known bug. Uh, there is a known duplication bug. I'm not going to tell you how to how to do it, but we are not going to be reproducing that known du that duplication bug on screen either. Anyway, so that's it for today. We've got a basic item transfer network set up. Um, it is not transferring everything. We are we still have to make our mimic crystals go over here. Um, you know what? Let's see. Do we have enough? Do, 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 do. Yeah, I know I don't have enough there. Hold on. I might have enough. Actually, yeah. Let, let, hold on, guys. Hold on. We're, we're going to go ahead and finish this. Uh, I need another piece of blue lapis. Okay. That's another piece of blue lapis. And then we'll take these and put them over here. And then we need the green dye, which I think... Did I put it over here? No, it must be upstairs. I'm pretty sure I have the green dye. So we'll be able to make all four of these. So that's good. That is good. There you go. Bingo. So we've got enough. So yeah, we'll go ahead and do all four of those, those chests that we already have in use. And I might move this chest down. That, that's definitely an idea. Let's, let's do that. Let's move this chest on down up to here. I mean, it's not like we have a whole ton of stuff in here. We'll put this and this and this and this. And we're going to throw these other air flickers in there too. All right. And these will go in here. Like that. Excellent. Throw this back in here. 
and reorganize. All right, so let's go ahead and get this done. It's not going to take much time, so we're good. All right, first off, put that in there. And there's our four export crystals. We need those to go... There to make four mimic crystals. Now we're going to place these mimic crystals on the back of these and we'll link those up. Now what the mimic crystals do is as soon as I link them up, it looks in the chest to see what items are there and we'll transfer in similar items into the chest. Oh wait, got to link them up. There we go. Those are paired. I wish, I don't know why it doesn't tell you that they're paired, but they are paired. Now, if I come in here and let, watch this, let's take, yeah, let's take a diamond out of here and let's take some of these lapis and we'll throw that over here and watch it come out of there back over here. That's how that works. So now it'll transfer items over to the chest, but it has to have one of the items in the chest first before it will transfer. So if we come back over to this and we throw in an item and we wait a while and we come back later and that item is still in the chest, that means that it does not fit any of these other areas. It doesn't fit any of these other chests, so it is stuck in this one, in limbo. So then we just have to make some more mimicrys and put them in one of these other chests done deal all right guys so that's it we've got our item net transfer network set up i'm going to go ahead and close these back off over here now we're not going to fill them in in the back because we don't need to but doo -doo -doo -doo. i am going to do this all right, so there we go. We've got our item network set up, and it is hi mostly hidden. Now, we do have this sitting here where you can see it, but everything else is invisible. You can't see it. Thanks for watching, guys. As always, a like, a comment, and a share. <laughs> That's all you need to do to let me know that you care. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next episode of Wizards Training on the Cupcode server.